question number four, and we're full up on questions. I got all 20 for today, you guys. Um, this comes from Chocolate Cow, who says, people quote prophecy as evidence of Jesus's deity. Could he have deliberately fulfilled some such as bribing men to divide his clothes or purposefully riding a donkey into Jerusalem? Um, yeah, he could have purposely fulfilled some. Um, bribing men to uh, gamble for his clothes is pretty unlikely. <laughs> um, the It's pretty unlikely. Um, but we also have historical reasons to think that that probably did happen. So, I, I mean, obviously, I trust the scriptures. But for those who are, who are wanting to see more support for the trustworthiness of scriptures, it is actually true that at the time, historically, the soldiers did take the belongings of those who were being crucified. It was later on, there was a ruling by one of the, one of the Caesars, hey, you guys can't do that anymore. But that was because it was a practice that was going on where they would take the belongings of the person. And um, um, so that's that that was just a normal practice for, for crucifixion at the time. Historically, there's no reason to doubt that happened. Um, what's crazy is that it was written about a thousand years before it happened when crucifixion hadn't been invented yet in Psalm 22. That's what's crazy. Jesus riding it on a donkey to Jerusalem, that, that was definitely him deliberately fulfilling prophecy. Does that, does, does that mean that the donkey riding is not a fulfilled prophecy? No, but it does mean this. If, if all that Jesus did was easily fulfilled prophecies where it's like, clap three times. And Jesus is like, what else do I got to do? Clap three times. All right, ride a donkey. I rode a donkey. What else do I do? Whistle this song. I'll whistle this song. If that was all Jesus did, if we were like, look at all this evidence for Jesus's, you know, authenticity. And it was just a bunch of easy to do yourself prophecies. Then yes, that would be a, a strike against Christianity. Um, so when Jesus rides the donkey in, I don't look at that and go, this is this is proof that Jesus was was Messiah. I think actually look at the specific prophecy of the donkey as this is proof that Jesus knew he was the Messiah, claimed to be the Messiah, and was deliberately seeing himself as the as the as the messianic figure riding in. So, in addition to the prophecies that Jesus couldn't have just done on purpose under normal human powers, we have the fact that he also was obviously cognizant that he was the Messiah as he was coming into Jerusalem at that time. Uh, see what I mean? We're just we're just trying to let the evidence say what it says. The donkey shows that Jesus knows he's Messiah, is claiming to be Messiah. Other things like where Jesus was born, when Jesus was born, um, how Jesus was killed. Like he he, he he can't, you can't reasonably say, well, that was all done deliberately, right? Um, th that's not likely. Um, him being pierced, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the, the resurrection of Christ, the, the eyewitness testimony to his, his resurrection. Like those are some things. There's a lot of stuff that Jesus did as well that like is not only fulfilled prophecy, but it's also miraculous. So like Jesus actually doing exorcisms and healing people, um, at least the people at the time, not just the writers of the gospel coming years later, the people at the time believe Jesus was an exorcist and healer. Like he was really doing these things. Like you can't do that under human powers. I have one, I know one atheist who said that this was like magician's tricks. Jesus was just doing like magician's tricks. Um, but that's only on a very like surfacey level. Does this sound good? When you actually read the passages and look at the descriptions of the events, they don't fit that description at all. Jesus would only be healing strangers. He wouldn't be healing well-known people in towns who had friends with them and stuff like this. Uh, those don't fit. So then you have to move to the conspiracy theory. I'm just rambling now, but you have to move to the conspiracy theory. Oh, well, the, the gospel writers fabricated all that stuff, except then you have to start to try to build a case for why you will selectively reject all the miraculous stuff in the New Testament when there's so much historical support for everything else in the New Testament, um, along with corroborating accounts. And anyway, there's, there's a, a big, long discussion that can happen there. Anyway, I hope that helps.